Okay, so welcome back to the Tango Towers Chapel. And we've had two setbacks with the organ. Here's the BOB blower, uh, British organ blowers, Bob Co. Derby, still in existence. That's going to be a 1950s unit, which is what we had planned for this organ. Unfortunately, when I connected it up, the motor is faulty and it managed to damage our three phase inverter, which I'll have to use my electronic skill to sort out. So what we had to do, and I wouldn't normally do this, I bought a blower off eBay. Now I don't buy blowers off eBay because they usually come from people who chop up organs. And seeing as our whole life is putting organs, redundant organs through the workshop and back into places of worship, it's not something I approve of. But, I had to do that and uh, so we've bought a small discus unit which is much smaller. Here we go. So here we are with the discus blower which is a one-sixth of a horsepower unit. It's very small. These run at twice the speed of the Bob ones. So these will be 2,800 RPM instead of the 1,400 RPM that the Bob one would be. So, this is kind of all I could get. There was a huge blower available for actually less money. I paid four times over what I should have done for that, but needs must, and there you go, somebody's rubbed their hands with glee. The good thing is, it's come with a box. So it saved me a day's work and 50 quids worth of materials. Uh, if that's going to be the blower we end up with. Now, it sh theoretically won't be big enough for this organ. Uh, that's come off a of one manual, and uh, this is two manual but it's certainly going to do us for the time being. We'll certainly be able to get the wind up and we'll certainly be able to get the swell sound or the top keyboards with the pipes up and running. So as we head towards Christmas, there's an awful lot, there's thousands of hours of work to do. We've put 800 hours into this bellows, the bellows here, and I've lost my place. And so um, it will tide us over. If we have to get the Bob One motor rebuilt, well, that's fine. And there's a firm in, in Grantham that does that kind of work. So I don't even have to take it to, to Bob at Derby. Because they'd only subcontracts, I expect. Anyway, did I say subcontract right? I don't know. That's a single phase unit. So the fact we've damaged our inverter uh, doesn't matter. We'll be able to run it off the, um, well, it needs to be on a contactor, doesn't it? But at the moment, it'll be off the, on the big isolator switch. So that, as I say, that did come with a cabinet and I spent two happy days paint stripping it because for some bizarre reason, the cabinet was painted pink. We've done a couple of coats of French polish just to make it look half decent. I will improve on that when it's actually installed. So that's gonna go in this box, which is currently sat on top of the bellows. So there's the blower box, which is sat on top of the bellows. Nice hole in it for the um, trunking to come out of. Um, it's come with a very intact flexible, which is more than our other one did. I was going to have to have one made uh, for the big blower. And so I say that's had the pink paint stripped off it. Now, I've put it on there because I need to make the plate. The plate is the piece of timber which will have a hole in it, which the trunking, we've chosen the flexible trunking, will be glued into, glued and leathered. So I'm going to move the camera over to that and let's open the box and hope I've ordered the right one. Why do I want a wine bath when I don't drink? Yeah. So, I don't think that's on camera, but that's where it's going. So we used to get this from RS. Oh, we used to get it from the organ builders wholesalers, Kimber Allen. Uh, and it was the uh, Copex stuff, which is the, um, you've kind of got a metal inner and then a kind of cardboard outer, and that's kind of the standard in organ building. 
But um, I've been using this, which it works at a higher pressure anyway, and it is, um, I actually like the idea it's see-through. You might not like the idea it's see-through, but I can see if there's mice in it, can't I? So uh, that's what we've been using, and this has come actually via eBay. Uh, but it's exactly what I'm looking for, and it's exactly the diameter, which is five inch, that I'm looking for. We've got four inch, we've got three inch in stock, but not five. Now our Konica is on four inch trunking, that is on Copex, um, and that's a bigger organ than this. But anyway, that's what the original trunking size was. They got a metal one, if you remember, and then it went into like a plastic drain pipe. Well, I've never seen plastic drain pipes used in church organs, uh, not by professional organ builders anyway. So um, we'll, we'll go back onto the flexible. Some, there are some arguments, it, it gives you instability in the wind, but uh, there you go. I mean, if there's a permanent installation and, so, and, and if the customer thought that wasn't right, well, we could have zinc permanent trunking manufactured, couldn't we? So there we are. So I need to make a plate so that the plate sits on there and is screwable onto there and then the trunking will face up to that. So that's what the idea is today. We have two plates to make. And I'll show you once again when the camera's actually in position. One there. And of course another one. The other one which goes into our inlet and as subsequently our control valve. Ironically, the blower box and this small blower came with a control valve of a very similar type and I wouldn't have needed to have bothered to make that. You'll also notice I've boarded up the outlet there and I've boarded up the other two outlets on the other side. So when we get this up and running, which will be today, it's Good Friday, I do have a church service, so I've got to keep an eye on the time, but the plan is to get the wind on this today uh, and then hopefully Mr Chippy and myself can manage to manhandle the 850 pound weight of this more than a king size double bed size bellows into position. The other thing I've got to do is the pantographs which go down the side to give equal um, between the upper and the lower um, halves of the bellows. Now we had another snag, we had a snag with the bellows and I can't show you really it, it'll, it'll come to light when the bellows inflates um, I'd got it to this stage I've just got to put some trim parts on four trim parts to finish and one of the ribs split those wooden ribs are 16 of them and one of them split and uh, the remains I will show you there's the remains of the two halves of the broken rib. So I spent two and a half hours making a rib. It's all shaped and it's different thickness at one side to another and all that and it's chamfered and whatever. And, uh, and then we had no alternative to, but to cut the bellows in half at the floating frame and totally remake that. Of course I had to totally make new upper gussets and it's all gone back together today, yesterday, whenever. So that's taken two weeks and 80 hours to correct that breakage. I don't know why it broke, I'm always inspecting these things for uh, cracks and dealing with them. Perhaps I could have glued that together with a modern adhesive and saved myself two and a half hours of time. But I've done the, what I believe to be the right thing and I've made a brand new one. So it's also cost £264 in new leather because I've, I have to cut through the leather which was already on. So leather for the first um, was 300 and about, I think it was about 380 and you've also got tape, that's including the tape. Um, and then the re-leathering has cost 164. We've got a bit of leftover leather which is dangling over that video monitor there. But you can't buy half a skin, so that's how it is. So, you know, it's going to cost what? Uh, three, four, five, it's going to cost just over 600 pounds in leather on this particular bellows. And, and say, um, 
No, I think it's 200 hours in work. Um, I think it was 200 hours plus the 80 for the repair, so it would be 280. I think that's where we are. So, um, big setback financially as well as, uh, as in time. So what we're going to do, we're going to get some thick plywood, which is in stock, and we're going to cut some five inch holes in that. So we're using the top of the bellows as a rather tall bench to do this marking out. It's 10 inches one way, nine inches the other. One of the wonderful things about living in Britain is I can do inches or centimeters and organs are in inches and this will work out nicely. So then we've gone across to find the center. There's the center and what we're gonna do, I've especially had to buy a hole saw. We could go around it by with a jigsaw, but it's not going to be a clean cut. Now we have these in other sizes, but I've had to buy this dead cheap one. I don't care if it breaks after two. The, the biggest one in this kit, and I think it's about 15 pounds, is the one we want, which is five inches. So I've used these type of things before. It can be scary. Looks like it's it's that one. So hopefully this is also five inches, which it looks to be. And hopefully that tube's five inches, which it looks to be. So I'm expecting this to be slightly undersized, so I'm expecting to have to file around a little bit, but we're gonna be only filing a fraction I am sure. So I'll get that set up in a drill. We'll be going through from two sides because although we've got a face side and an inside, I want it to be neat on both sides. We don't want it splintering out. So we will do that. I might, I'm gonna use a cordless drill. It's only the one, it's only 18 millimeters thick. It's not the end of the world. So I'm gonna get set up and we'll see whether we can do that on video. You can watch myself drilling my hands off. Right, we use one of the outside benches, and uh, while we can, so we need to get the drill in the centre. I think we'll go back to the other side now and we'll finish it from this side. Okay, so two batteries later, there we have it. You've got a wheel for your toy cart. There we go. Well, we'll do the other one. Uh, we'll do the other one on the same piece of timber before cutting them up because it's much easier to do it on a big piece of timber than it is to start cutting them up and then you've got to start screwing them to the workbench. My woodwork teacher at school in Rotherham said, it was Mr, was it Mr. Forthrop? No, it was Mr. Brown. He said, as long as you can, for as long as you can. So the piece of timber, as long as you can, for as long as possible. Very good advice. So I'm gonna mark out the next one. And there's our second hole. So we can cut those two out. So this was seven and a half by nine as against nine by 10. So that's the control valve end, that's the blower end. So we'll get those uh, sanded down and uh, holes put in them and then we need to put a gasket round. So they're the pantographs which are just drying up just side two, painted side one. Um, used the hammerite to paint on these like we did with the bellows weights. Um, don't, Bella's weights don't need to go on for this for the test, but we're at that stage now. I just need to fit these 
um, this makes the bellows uh, the two sections of the bellows rise equally so we'll go inside and hopefully these are dry enough to fit okay so back inside so we'll look at that we have the box with the parts for the pantographs in the screws all six screws all six spaces nothing missing I've refurbished the screws like we do and then when we look at how it was installed to be honest that picture doesn't show how nasty and rusty they'd become now the front one was in better condition than the back one uh, and we've put both of them in the vise and straightened them up and bashed them around a bit and then repainted them so that's now here mounted whoops just get the camera in position and then we've got one corresponding at the rear as well and of course that one will be against the wall so it needs to be right so I have winded it up, I've powered it up and don't think this is the first time this is actually the third time but I haven't had to make any adjustments I can see some wind leaks and some of them are the holes that we make and also the original manufacturer makes in the ribs uh, so they can be screwed to a gluing bench uh, to be glued so we just need to patch one or two of those uh, I'll, I'll go around and, and kind of mark them even if it's in my mind okay so I'm going to put the power on to the blower now it's going to be quite a lot of heating because the hose the, um, this hose has not got any lead around here it's just tacked on to the four sides of the plate and at the blower end it isn't even tapped in, it's just pushed in the hole and supported on a Coca-Cola crate in the hope that it doesn't fall off. So here goes the power. So now we'll open the control valve. Remember this will be on a pulley and then go to the top, it automatically keeps the, the level constant. Now of course, this is on the workbench and where the pulley goes in the organ will be decided later on because we're obviously doing this differently to how it was in the church. So here we go, we're going to put some wind in, open that with sluice gate. And that's probably about where you normally have it to rise. It didn't do too much creaking. The air inlet's now off and it will slowly drop as it um, loses pressure through leakage. Now remember we've got these emergency escape valves, there's two of them, which don't it pretty much go onto the table. But you nevertheless see it even onto the table. Just put some more air in. So that will now bounce around. Remember it's going to have those weights on it to give it the correct pressure, which will be about three and a half inch water gauge. So I just need to go around, it's not the leather that's going to be leaking, it's just to make it some we'll pull the manufacturing holes, I'll go around and we'll get some, uh, some leather patches on those uh, just as they did originally. Okay, we're in, we've got it done. I says to Mr Chippy, I've got it planned, we've got two trolleys, one which you can see, one which is behind the table which is now on its side. So we dropped it down onto one trolley the, and the wheels, I'd put blocks of wood screwed to the floor so it wouldn't move. Because it's difficult, when these things were built, there'd be a dozen people to help. That's 850 pounds of weight, that bellows. So, we uh, slipped out the cross piece, um, which is the second one up. So, that's the one we took out. And when we were able to splay it apart, which was the plan, because we hadn't put the top one in, we've just done that one. We hadn't put the bottom one in, We've just done that one. So we splayed it apart, trolleyed it in, and we just had to lift one edge at a time onto the uh, framework, and it did only take 10 minutes, so it's in. I showed Mr. Chippy it inflating. You can see we've disconnected the, uh, the blower, and that'll stay disconnected until we put the soundboard on. So the back soundboard on the top, to so go on the top, right on the top at the back, that's the swell one, we'll be putting that in probably tomorrow. We'll put the trunk in, we'll get the wind on. Uh, we still won't have it on its um, automatic control valve because 
we still don't quite know where that's going to be because obviously there's a lot of mechanism to go in. We might have to just rig it up temporarily, but we will need to blow the, um, the air through to make sure there's no foreign bodies in vacuum the inside of it with Henry, the vacuum cleaner. So I'm very pleased it's in and that's uh, what 280 hours work doing that bellows. So that should be good for another 70 years hopefully. There was one little wind leak which was a, a, a screw hole which um, one of the um, gussets qu hadn't quite gone over. Uh, the, when it was manufactured back in 1864 those screw holes were put in to be able to screw the ribs to a pasting table while you were uh, gluing it up which of course we used as well. So that's, that's got a piece of leather over that bit of a hole and that was the only leak I could spot. So uh, we were in. So uh, and this is the trouble with organs because if you need to get to the bellows a lot of the time you've got to strip it down to this level and of course that's very expensive. So um, I say we've put the rest of the building frame in so that bottom one will hold the swell pedal and the composition pedals. The next one up which we slipped out and we've put it back in properly with the coach bolts will support the keyboard frame and you can actually see at the back actually see where that keyboard frame slots in and comes across. So there we are, that's where, that's where we've got to with it. And although we can't get to the back of this, you couldn't in its previous installation, you couldn't get to the right hand side and of course we can, we've got all, there's equal in this room so we've got all this space. So before the pedal section, the trunking had to go under the bellows, really really heavy chunk and it's pneumatic and it all needs overhauling and I'd have hated to have to overhaul that first because you're not going to have any, shall we say, pleasure. You're going to do work and work and work and just not see anything happening even though you know the pedals are going to work. So uh, I'm, I'm pleased that's going to be later down because we can, we can do the pedals later in the way this is being installed. So there we are, that's the next part finished and the structure will soon be going up so we'll start with the soundboard probably tomorrow, it's Easter day tomorrow and then the soundboard uh, once that's in the swell box will go up, that will get painted and we will start installing the action. So thanks for watching, part whatever it is of the 1864 um, Fortune Andrews pipe organ installation in the private chapel at Tango Towers.